Devin Bolden says, how does PD measure up to other editing software? That is a great question, Delvin. So in my humble opinion, it really depends on the user and what they are doing, right? So I don't think you can measure any software one-to-one -one because people are going to look at certain types of software and say that they like one better than the other based on their own needs and based on how complex they want things to be. So for example, a lot of the videos that I make that are not on YouTube, when I work for clients, I make uh, event videos. Like it could be a wedding, it could be a concert, uh, it could be, you know, sometimes I'll do music videos or, you know, uh, commercials or things like that. So for those types of things, if I don't need uh, any type of, uh, let's say complex effects like rotoscoping. If I don't need to rotoscope out something because it's moving and I need to take it out of there because I'm trying to make some fantastic effect, Power Director is all I need. Okay. I think it really boils down to, and what a lot of people don't think about is this editing is just one part of the process. What it really boils down to is your understanding of how to film, how to compose shots, your lighting, sound. All of those things come into play. And if you do those things right, if you make a documentary, right, using Power Director, and you're not doing a bunch of crazy effects and stuff, you're just making a documentary. It's like any other documentary out there. If you make a documentary using Power Director and you make a documentary using Final Cut or Adobe Premiere Pro, guess what? Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference because Power Director has all of the tools that you need to create a video a documentary, um, a news uh, briefing, um, a music video, things like that. All those things that you need, Power Director has them. So when you ask the question, how does it measure up to other software? I respond by saying, it's up to the needs of the user. If you are somebody who works in Hollywood, you need to make a bunch of effects and you need to do all this crazy stuff, you probably not gonna wanna use Power Director. Besides the fact that you have to do other more complex things, you also have to be able to share your files or your projects with other people. And so because of that, you want to be using a software that all of the other professional Hollywood people are using. And that's probably going to be either Final Cut or Premiere Pro. So you would want to fall in line so that you could uh, share projects with them and work together and collaborate on things. If you're just the only one out there using power director, even if you can get things done, it's harder to share your projects and things like that. So that's another uh, consideration that you need to make if you're using it. So to me, for my needs, I think power director measures up to any other software out there. There's nothing that I can't do for my needs on power director that I could do with final cut premiere pro Sony Vegas, whatever. For my needs, professionally, Power Director suits the bill and it measures right up there with all the other ones. Somebody else who has other needs might say Power Director doesn't suit their needs, so it doesn't measure up to them. So it really depends on the individual, Delvin. It's how it goes. All right, Steve Williams. Steve says, What are the specs of your own personal rig? So this is my editing PC. This is these are the specs of the things that I use. Now this is I've had this this uh, setup for a while, so this isn't like the the newest greatest stuff out there. But this is what I'm using. Um, so as far as the specs, so I have a, a Core i9 7900 um, X series with ten cores. Okay, so I go as far as high as I can go. The i9 pretty high, higher than i7 and all those other ones out there. Um, I have uh, two of these one terabyte solid state drives, one for my system and then one for just putting data on um, like any of shadow files, things like that. Um, these 10 terabyte internal hard drives, these are actually being used in my external hard drive. So I have um, four of those. So I have 40 terabytes on an external drive that I put in archive all of my videos and things in there. Uh, this is my video card, older video card. Um, it's 11 gigs. 
So people say, well, I got a two gig, I got a three gig. Mm, I, I, I overkill. I go as high and mighty as I can. Um, so I have the HyperX Kingston technology, HyperX Drive. I have 32 gigs of RAM. I don't have eight, I don't have 16, I got 32. 32 gigs of RAM. I got this cooler, liquid cooler. This is the external hard drive I was talking about that I have. I don't have these monitors anymore. I now have a, um, a 49 inch ultra wide monitor that I use, but everything else on here is exactly what's on my PC or in my external hard drive right now. And this is the case that I use and this is the motherboard that I use. All right, Madison Ferrari says, hi teacher. Why does powered, why Cyberlink doesn't sell old versions for us? I have version 16. I'd like to buy a lifetime version 20. Uh, my earnings in YouTube are not sufficient to pay for an annual subscription. I would say that they don't sell old versions as a business and most businesses don't sell old versions because there's upkeep involved with that. So in order to continue to sell old versions, they would have to support those old versions with updates. And once they move on to the new version, they don't want to have to spend the resources to update old versions of the program. As you'll notice, when they came out with PowerDirector uh, version 20, they had updates for it. You could have bought PowerDirector version 20 when it was the current version of the software and you could have bought a standalone lifetime license for it. You still can for version 21, right? So you can buy version 21 and you can get a lifetime license for that. You don't have to pay for annual subscription. Now, once again, there are links to the lifetime license upgrade in the video description of any one of my videos. If you click on show more, you will see links where you can buy the lifetime license of the current version of Power Director. Brian Rodriguez says, how does Power Director measure up to in terms of color grading? Is Color Director worth it? I want some legit color grading quality. Your question was how does PD measure up in terms of color grading? It's pretty limited. I mean, you've seen the color adjustment tools that are there, but then the only real color grading is like they have LUTs and you can change the uh, intensity of the LUT, but that's about it. Um, color director goes a step further by giving you things like um, histograms. It's got curves. Uh, it's got some other... Um, some other functionality with uh, color grading. And I think it's pretty good. Do I prefer that over something like DaVinci Resolve when it comes to color grading? I would prefer a DaVinci Resolve when I need to do color grading. So if I use like a, I got a, a Canon C70 and I like to record raw and I like to record in a log, C log two, a log profile. So when I use that camera, I can't even use Power Director to color grade uh, because Power Director won't accept the raw codec. So I have to use DaVinci Resolve and I have to use that to get the, the C log uh, profile looking correct like looking like it does to the eye, like a RGB. And then I also have to do my color grading there. But after I do that and I render the video, I'll bring the video into power director to do all my editing and stuff like that. So that probably answers your question. If I were you and you want to get the best color grading uh, tool out there, I would say go with DaVinci resolve for now until color director steps up and adds things like, uh, color wheels and uh, more uh, functionality with nodes and things like that where I can layer my color changes and things like that. Um, that's what I would be looking for from Color Director and it doesn't have those functions right now. Metro Boomin says, question, when downloading B-roll from Shutterstock, what's the easiest way to find the B-roll which you downloaded? Oh my God, look, you trying to get me in trouble. So um, the easiest way to find it is to go to downloaded in PowerDirector, okay? 
So let me just repeat that loudly so everyone can hear. The easiest way to find Shutterstock downloads is by going to download it in Power Director. All right. So right here, just download it. And this should be all the stuff that you downloaded. And it's probably going to take forever. Let me cancel this because I don't, don't want to go there mad. See, here's some stuff that I downloaded. Okay. So there you go. That's, that's how you get there, people. So if you're asking how to find the files on your machine, like where are they on my PC? I got in trouble for telling people that I actually had a video and it was out for like a week and it was crushing it on YouTube. I mean, crushing. And I ended up getting a copyright strike. Now, let me tell you, it's funny. I try to dispute the copyright strike because I reached out to Shutterstock and I reached out to Power Director and I said, Shutterstock gave me a, a copyright strike for this video. And I sent the video to both of them and said, why are you giving me a copyright strike? You're, this is royalty free stuff. This is no, there's no copyright infringement that's happening here. And they were like, well, in the end user license agreement, it says that you can only access the Shutterstock files from Power Director. You're not allowed to access them from your PC. And by showing other people where they were, where the files live on your PC, I was violating the end user license agreement. And I said, okay, so if I'm violating the end user license agreement, that means that you're supposed to take my license from the, from the software. Like I'm not allowed to use the software. And I was very upfront with that. I was like, that's a license agreement violation. That's not a copyright violation. I have not broken any cops. So why are you giving me a copyright strike on YouTube for this video? They never responded. Okay. Never responded. So I left it alone. 30 days went by the copyright strike got dropped and I moved on with life. But I'll tell you one thing. I ain't never telling nobody where them files is at. And I'm never, but I will tell you this. I'm never telling anybody about it again because I got in trouble for no reason. I think I, 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 I won't say I got in trouble for no reason. I should have got in trouble. I should have, maybe they should have took the software license from me and said, I can't use that version of power director anymore. That would have been fair to me. I would have been like, all right, dang, I can't use that one. I'll use the older version, blah, blah, blah. But giving me a copyright strike. Hmm, that's kind of foul. They, they kind of went left on that one with me, but it's neither here nor there, man. I'm going to move on, get off my little soapbox and move on back to being a, a healthy person, <laughs> whatever I am. <laughs> All right. Just got another super chat, $5 super chat from true challenge proof to the, uh, how can I become more proficient in PD? Are there, are there courses? Also, what is your background? How did you get started in PD? Why PD? All right. So a lot of questions there, but, um, first and foremost, appreciate the super chat, my, my friend. Um, I think right now the best way to become proficient in power director is just practice, just doing it, using it as much as you can. Um, the more you use it, the better you're going to get, man. Um, also my tutorials, um, I got a bunch of different playlists on YouTube with different, uh, in different categories. You can go in there, check those out and learn tutorial by tutorial, but practice is going to be the main thing that's going to help you get to where you want to be. Um, as far as myself, my background, uh, I guess you mean my background in video. So I started making videos when I was in the air force, uh, just started kind of making videos for people who were like PCSing or getting out, separating from the military. And, um, that just grew into a passion I started doing things for family and friends, whether it was, you know, weddings or different events and things like that. And then it just grew from there. Really, man, it's just time practice and, and know how, I mean, 
doing things, making mistakes and learning from them. It's a big thing. Um, now, I mean, I got all kind of, uh, I have clients that I do work for on a regular basis. I do, um, I'm like the tech, the technical guy on different podcasts, on different shows, stuff like that. So I do a lot of stuff out there now, but it all comes from uh, repetition, practice and learning. And that's the best way to get better as far as I'm concerned. So the Vari says, don't you think that the bundled version of audio director is lame? Audacity does the job. Audacity definitely does the job. I mean, audacity is like, I don't, I don't really think that you need any other audio editor except Audacity because it's free and it does almost anything you needed to do. I mean, I can't really think of anything on the top of my head that it can't do. Uh, like it does the same things that audio director can do and the same things that, um, Adobe audition can do. So I can't, I can't disagree with you. Um, but for those people who want the bundle, is it worth it to them to have the same, the functionality to be able to go between the different programs, just jump from one to the other, take an audio file that's already in power director, click on a button and have that file automatically imported into audio director. Do what you got to do, hit another button and have it brought back into power director with those changes. Someone might think that that ease of use and that integration is worth the money. I don't know. It's to each his own, my brother. There is no absolutes in this world. There are no absolutes. Everybody got an opinion and a need and they're not all the same. So, yes, I think Audacity could do everything it can do. And yes, I think that some, some people out there who have audio director will find value in it because it not only does those same things, but it's integrated. 